So the first speaker today is Gerrit Schmidt Schoenbein, and um, he's going to talk about engineering and medicine. Thank you, Susan. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present to you a strategic plan for engineering in clinical medicine. The essence of that plan is this, that the involvement of engineering with medical problems, which is currently flourishing on this campus in terms of basic science, needs to be extended to the patients. Um, we are in need of uh, a major need because of the overriding cost of uh, healthcare, the inequalities of healthcare delivery, the staggering cost of it, and the need for innovation, especially at the, per at the prevention um, uh, level. And furthermore, there is another need. There is a very serious competition going on in various regions of the United States to become the center for biomedical engineering technology. The current status of engineering in medicine is absolutely favorable. We have a campus with an ideal environment, two first-rate uh, schools, the medical school, the engineering school. We have the luxury of two medical centers, the UCSD and the um, uh, VA Medical Center. Uh, we have a uh, outstanding uh, basic science in biology, and we have world-class institutions that surround us in, in addition to some vibrant uh, industry that is in immediate proximity to us. The current interactions between the School of Engineering and the School of Medicine is very healthy, but it is all on basic science, with few exceptions. And what we need is an engagement between the clinical sciences and the clinical activities and the academic en engineering um, so that untapped opportunities can come forward. Let me give you some examples. The type of targeted joint appointments between the Jacob School and the School of Medicine that are possible and that will bridge this barrier between engineering and the clinical medicine involves, for example, what is called systems bioengineering and analysis tools. These are for large personalized data sets that are now reality uh, in the area of genomics, metabolomics, proteomics, microbiome, and imaging. And these need to be integrated into a next generation diagnostic tool that allows individualized high precision medicine. It takes engineering and it will take engineering at a very deep, great depth to achieve that. Um, we have already ongoing activities of an entire new field, which is computational bioengineering with, specific, uh, uh, with organ specific models that are specific for individual uh, um, uh, patients in cardiac models. There's an obvious need for wireless help for personalized medicine, much beyond what we're doing currently, especially wireless monitoring of the elderly population, which will be otherwise unmanageable. There is a deep need for, in both neurologic area, cardiovascular area, for tissue engineering towards a targeted prevention and technology-assisted primary care prevention that does not exist today and it needs to be introduced. Now, there's obvious uh, need for a deep involvement of engineering in the next generation of drug delivery. These are tough problems that uh, require many years of engineering uh, involvement and, of course, in, in minimal non-invasive uh, invasive surgery. The outcome of this interaction will be development of new approaches to disease and prevention and early diagnosis, introduction of effective devices and treatments, and new approaches to reduce the cost of healthcare delivery. Now, the benefit to UCSD of such an initiative is, first of all, it will open new public and private funding opportunities. It will opportunity for new healthcare professional degree programs. Some of these are already now in the planning. And these will be between engineering, clinical medicine, and for example, the Rady School of, of Management. There will be generation of a new entrepreneurial activity, very important to our students. And of course, there will be a connection to the biomedical 
industry. The participants in that we visualize span across the entire campus. There will be, of course, all the clinical departments in the School of Medicine eventually, obviously the Altman Clinical Translational Research Institute, all departments in the School of Engineering, the Institute of Engineering and Medicine, which is ORU, the Rady School, the QBio program in the divisions of biological and natural sciences, the Qualcomm Center, the San Diego super, Supercomputer, and there are others. The opportunities that we have here will provide not only a, 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 a focus for our local region, but in fact, they bridge across the campus and reach into international health. Engineering of appropriate and inexpensive medical technology for the point of care diagnostic and therapy is a requirement for worldwide health care. And the, this calls for the engagement in this enterprise of economists, they have expertise in international markets, political scientists who know the underlying cultures and the government structures in various countries. It obviously will involve physicians with expertise for third world diseases. And it creates, of course, in turn, ties back to the US healthcare problems. So clinical, the involvement of engineering in clinical medicine is an opportunity at UCSD like we had never before. It is a natural child for us to grow. And in fact, I'm very pleased to see that several of the presentations that are going to follow actually fall more or less into a similar scheme. Thank you. Yes, yes. I'm going to be presenting a bit later. I was really um, excited by your presentation. So the big question is how, what next? How do we do this? I think it's, first of all, there will be Interactions between clinical science and engineering will have to be established. Some of them already on, on the way at this point. There will be need to hire new faculty lines. In the particular areas I selected there were in fact six lines where we don't have the right expertise. There will be need for long-term interactions. I want to emphasize this. Even the smallest clinical problems are tough problems and they cannot be solved by industry. They will have to be solved on campus. So it starts out with some faculty lines. Some of them we can accommodate here on campus at this point. In the future, my long range vision is in fact that before I retire from UCSD, there will be a building for engineering and clinical medicine right between the medical corridor and the engineering corridor. And I think it will be a vibrant building. David. I just wanted to add to your list, I think there's actually room for humanities in this proposal, because I think there's going to be a need for um, ethicists you know, and other things oh, to understand yeah. you know, how, you, you know, what are the implications of this new information, um, how, how is it propagated, how is it communicated. Right. So I actually think it's, it's actually all three things, science, you know, social sciences, and humanities are all involved in this. Absolutely, I completely agree. I have, for example, a grant right now with social sciences. And I see the enormous need that exists uh, for anything from childhood diseases to adult management that the social sciences have to be part of that. Thank you, David. I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, I'm speaking in a little bit, so I'll be very brief. I'm uh, chief of biostatistics here. And right. I just want to say this is a, a beautiful proposal, and, and biostats um, would love to be part of the validation studies for right. each of these. Right. Uh, translational projects. Yes, yes, we, we, we think that in fact, many aspects of basic medical sciences will be part of that. Uh, but I wanted to put the emphasis today on engineering in the clinical setting. An engineer is talking directly to those clinicians who have to take care of these difficult health problems right in front of us, perhaps some of us. Thanks. Thank you.